Hello, I wanted to record a quick video to show you a couple of things. One, how I can take the musical output from my DAW, my digital audio workstation, which in this case happens to be Reaper, but really could be any uh, digital audio workstation out there that is uh, able to host VST plugins, how I can use that and put that into OBS. That way I can stream my music process onto things like Twitch and YouTube. Pretty cool. Then I want to show one more thing, which is how I can take it one step further and utilize the output of OBS as an input into teleconferencing software like Zoom and Discord, or if I want to share musical stuff on a Skype call, this is how I would do it. It requires you to go through a couple of hoops. I'm going to show you what those all are. So right now I'm actually using OBS to record my stuff right here. I'm just recording this right now. And I'm going to try to record Reaper alongside it. You might be able to hear very faintly that there is this choir that I'm playing. It really should be quite loud, but really you're just hearing it uh, picked up by my microphone up here from my speakers as opposed to going directly through the computer. Well, one of the things that OBS can do is that it can host VST plugins now. And so we're going to install something. We're going to go to Reaper's website and check out their Replug VST FX suite. It's pretty cool. It's free. Even though it is on the Reaper site, it doesn't only work on Reaper. In fact, it works on all sorts of other DAWs. I'm going to download it like so. And it has a lot of plugins in there, but really the only one that we want to deal with is this thing called Restream. Support streaming from host to host of audio and or MIDI over a LAN segment. Now, of course, we're not doing this over the network. Instead, we're just going to go between disparate applications. Now, I've already got this installed, but I want to show a couple of things here. There's my license agreement. Yeah, yeah. Here are all the plugins it installs. If you go to Restream, it'll show that, oh, stereo. That's all we need really for streaming over the internet. But if you want to try the others, you're welcome to. Now, I want to go one more click further because here it says choose install location. And this is kind of important. OBS does allow you to use VST2 plugins, but it's kind of dumb about it. It only searches in certain hard coded file locations. So if you change this destination folder to something else, you might not be able to utilize your VST plugins. Make sure you stick to the default or at least to this C program files VST plugins directory. That will work. OBS will find those DLL files that are in that directory. Now I'm just going to cancel out of this because I've already installed this thing. Let's go to Reaper. Now I've got a big old project. I'm just playing around with my choir. You can kind of faintly hear it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert Restream into here. Restream, and you'll see a couple different versions of it. Because I have Reaper, it actually came with that Replug suite. And so you can see this Restream Cocos. But the one that I just installed is Replugs Edition. You should use that version, Replugs Edition. And once you've got that, you're confronted with this thing. I want this thing being on my master bus for my DAW to send audio. And I'm not going to send over the network. I'm just going to say local broadcast. Now, this should be enough for this. And you can see it light up. Again, you're still just barely hearing the audio. Let's go to OBS now and set this thing up. You can see my audio mixer over here. And let's add a source. Now, it might seem that we could just add an audio output capture, but let me show you what happens when you do that. I've got my audio output capture, and it's not glowing, which is fine, because we haven't added our filter yet. I'm going to go ahead and add this filter. 
VSD2 plugin here. And I'm going to select Restream Standalone. OK, identifier is correct. It says default. Reaper, it says like it's broadcasting here, identifier default. What's going on? Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to hit enter on this thing. And you'll notice there, it glows. That's kind of weird. You can hear that error. I'm going to play this choir sound on my keyboard while that error is going and listen to this. Did you notice that? You could hear the choir actually really quite clearly while that error sound is actually playing. Um, this is just a little funny idiosyncrasy about how Windows instantiates its audio interfaces. So it's going to not always be open all the time. And because of that, you don't want to use audio output capture. So instead of audio output capture, I'm going to do audio input capture because audio input capture is going to always be live. So let's create a new source. We'll call this DAW. And we'll use one of my unused inputs, something like um, this ADAT. I'm not using, I'm not feeding anything from my ADAT right now. Now that I've got that, filters, VST2 plugin. Restream standalone. Hear that clearly now? That's pretty great. It works. You're hearing this in OBS. It's being recorded right now. So now we are already at a place where we can go and stream our Reaper audio or other DAW audio to Twitch, to YouTube, what have you. That's great. Um, you might have noticed that I was able to use an unused audio input. But what if we don't have an unused audio input? One thing you might want to try doing, if that is the case, is just add a couple of volume down gain filters. So I can take the volume down of anything that I'm currently using, like my own microphone. And actually, I'll go ahead and... Uh, no, I don't have to show you that. But you could just gain that thing down so that you're effectively at uh, no input, then add that VST plugin and everything will be okay. Now, what if we want to go a little bit further? I want to take my audio output and put it into something like Skype. And this is something that uh, originally prompted this video I was seeing on music composer forums. Hey, how do I share my music output from my digital audio workstation on a Skype call or something like that? Well, let's go to another application that you can install. If you go to vb-audio.com, you'll come across this really cool website. They have a lot of different audio software, different audio utilities that you can use. And one of the cool things that they have is this free driver called VB Cable. And that installs a bunch of um, virtual audio output and input interfaces that will just sort of internally connect to each other. So you can download that. It's great. It's free. He encourages you to donate. And if you do so, you can actually get a more robust version with more cables connected, more of these virtual internal cables. But I've already got this installed, so let's go to OBS. Now, one of the things that happens when you're dealing with this is you have the ability to monitor your OBS input. Uh, usually, you, do, you don't use this because you don't have to worry too much about it. You have very simple setups. But if you go to Advanced Audio Properties, if you right-click on Audio Mixer, and it's kind of right below the screen there. Actually, I'm going to go 
up a little bit so you can see. There's advanced audio properties. You right click on that and whenever you add something to the audio mixer, it will typically default to monitoring off. And what I want to do actually is monitor and output. Monitor and output. Now that I've got that, and I've installed that VB audio application I pointed at you earlier. I can go to my settings, go to audio, and then have my monitoring device set up. My monitoring device in this case is going to be cable input, VB audio virtual cable. That is what we're going to use in our various communication software. And I've got Discord here right now. Hello, Discord. So as you can see, this thing is set to my microphone input, which is my SPDIF. Hello, you can see my bar go into the green as I speak. But if I do my choir, it's just gonna be at that noise floor. We should be hearing that pretty clearly, but hey, we've got that VB audio cable already installed. So this should show up as an input device here, right? Where is it? There it is. Cable output, VB audio virtual cable. And you can see it respond, not just to the microphone because my microphone is set up in OBS, but also to my uh, instruments from Reaper, which are going into OBS as well. So yeah, now this thing works very well audio wise. If we want to go a little bit further, we can do things like installing virtual webcams. I have a really cool thing in OBS that allows me to take the output of OBS, the stuff that would be normally streamed or recorded, and turn it into a virtual webcam that can be used by other applications. So in tools, you can see this thing called virtual cam. And if you search for OBS virtual cam, you can find that. Hey, cool. I've got that thing all set up. And if you look on Discord, got a little test video that I could probably put here for OBS camera. I'm gonna go like that. And you can see my Discord settings. Let's change it to something a little bit more interesting like uh, my Reaper setup. So if I want to bring my Reaper video or anything else that I can imagine with the video mixing and scene setup of OBS and share not just the audio but the video of that into a Skype call or a Zoom call, then I can with this virtual cam. So there you go. Um, I hope that this sort of step-by-step -step process for sharing um, your DAW output into different things on the internet, different applications by using good plugins and OBS Studio software. I hope that this was really helpful for you. So, later.